Greetings, folks. Welcome to Biology, Environmental Studies, Geography 330, Geographic Information Systems at Al Sabal Institute. Your instructor, Joseph Kursky here. I've got my map tie on. The theme for week one is get mapping, get mapping. As you will discover in this course, a web map in its strict sense can be any map that is online. These include many maps that are in static form. Data cannot be added to them. You cannot change their scales. You cannot embed them in other media. You cannot change the symbology on them, etc. These include such formats as maps in JPEG, PNG, stored as images, as well as maps stored as PDFs and in other formats. These maps can be excellent teaching and learning resources to be sure, and can be used in decision-making in many types of organizations. This course, however, will focus on interactive maps that have been created by and served in a geographic information systems or GIS. Most aspects about these maps can be changed by anyone with GIS tools and sometimes can be changed in a simple web browser without GIS tools. The symbology, scale, locations, data, and just about everything else about these maps can be changed and adjusted by the user of the maps and thus are more powerful than static maps. A subset of these interactive web maps are web mapping applications, web mapping applications. These are created by those with GIS tools and you students in this course will create your own. Stay tuned. These include maps with animation play buttons allowing time to be viewed easily. Maps allowing 3D profiles across terrain to be created by drawing lines across sections of the world. Multimedia maps called story maps and many more. For this week's module, you will explore several fascinating and powerful web mapping applications so that you can see the power that these maps have to invite exploration and discovery. And again, you will be creating your own. The course introduces two categories of maps from reference maps to thematic maps. The course also introduces a number of fundamentals from data collection to science approaches, ranging from mapping data, using symbolization to best represent data, simplifying and classifying data via visual and statistical methods, and then finally analyzing data and maps with a, a range of methods. My question from earlier, haven't all the maps been made yet? No, is the answer. These web maps are perfect examples in the sense that they are continually updating. They are based on real-time information or near real-time. And the maps that you or I make with these tools is different today than they were last week, or in some cases, an hour ago. Think weather, traffic, water quality, wildfire perimeters. So in week one, get mapping, readings and videos, you'll examine a variety of maps in Andy Woodruff's map collection. As you do, we will examine what is a map, the Penn State video and others will be fascinating. You will consider symbology, map representation, and clarity. One theme will be maps as decision-making tools. We will discuss the components of geographic information systems, define GIS, and examine how GIS is changing. We will also discuss types of GIS data. The, the data is like the fuel for the maps. Spatial phenomena. GIS data models will be examined as well as the information part of GIS, the I part of GIS, the information part. We will also discuss the types of attribute data. And GIS is a spatial technology. It's a platform. What implications does this platform notion have? Then we will talk about GIS in your own career pathway a bit. And finally, talk about earth changes and spatial technology, which is at the heart of the mission of uh, Al Sabal uh, Institute. A brief history of GIS and society will be instructive, I think. And we'll also ask, why is this the ideal time in the history of GIS for you to be looking at GIS as part of your career toolkit? We'll explore some maps and discuss the geospatial technology competency model. In our hands-on component, we will examine surveys and dashboards. We will look at remote sensing raster application examining changes over time, changes over space and time, Landsat, Lens Viewer. Then we will compare and contrast cities using the urban observatory. Then we'll investigate some population trends and population pyramids from the NASA CDAC population viewer and international migration web mapping applications, which I think will be fascinating. I think you'll really love that. 
and close with some interesting global ecoregions investigation. Hey, folks around the world, map on, ooh, my soul. Onward, let's dig into week one. We'll see you there. Thank you.